Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> so right now, uh, people are walking in front of us. Would you like to tell everyone where we are? This we're is our new home, right? Sorry. We're in Hampton Court Palace, which is the home of King Henry VIII. Oh, yeah, yeah. Abusive, abusive leader if there ever was one. <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right, we haven't got much battery life left, so I'm just conscious of that. <laughs> okay. I know what's going to happen when you're in the it's going to die. No, it's just one of them will die, but hopefully we'll... Anyway, we are reading from Bhagavatam, where? Kanto 3, Chapter 30, Text 21. Oh. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya I think everyone's going to stand right in front of us. No one was here when we came. That's what happens. When we come, everyone comes. Hearing the Bhagavatam. All right. While carried by the constables of Yamaraj, <laughs> he is overwhelmed and trembles in their hands. While passing on the road, he is bitten by dogs and he can remember the sinful activities of his life. He is thus terribly distressed. Oh, Lord. Purple, it appears from this verse that while passing <coughs> from this planet to the planet of Yamaraj, the culprit arrested by Yamaraj's constables meets... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> meets many dogs. <laughs> which bark and bite just to remind him of his criminal activities or sense gratification. It is said in Bhagavad Gita that one becomes almost blind and is bereft of all sense when he is infuriated by the desire for sense gratification. He forgets everything. One is bereft of all intelligence when he is too attracted by sense gratification and he forgets that he has to suffer the consequences also. Here the chance for recounting his activities of sense gratification is given by the dogs engaged by Yamaraj. While we live in the gross body, such activities of sense gratification are encouraged even by modern government regulations. In every state all over the world, such activities are encouraged by the government in the form of birth control. Women are supplied pills and they are allowed to go to a clinical laboratory to get assistance for abortions. This is going on as a result of sense gratification. Actually, sex life is meant for begetting a good child. But because people have no control over the senses and there is no institution to train them to control the senses, the poor fellows fall victim to the criminal offences of sense gratification and they are now punished after death as described in these pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. I hope you heard that and weren't too distracted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's ironic that we're reading about sense mm -hmm. gratification and sex life and controlling and birth control as it were because of, of who Henry VIII or what he's famous for you know not so much well maybe you know I think this woman's going to stop right there <laughs> but more for um, his, in terms of his what he achieved as a monarch he's not so he's remembered more for um, the fact that he had basically killed his wives because he wanted a son so he had two daughters and one son they all became monarchs they all ruled England in the Tudor dynasty but it's interesting I'm talking about yeah murder and punishment and Punishment for not controlling your senses. I wonder where Mr. Henry VIII went, <laughs> actually, and how um, Yamaraj and his servant dealt with him. Mm -hmm. oh. Confirmed. Maybe yeah. that was him there. Yeah. Maybe he's working his way back up the food chain. <laughs> uh <-huh. coughs> but yeah, I mean, it just seemed like, you know, born into this high level of aristocracy and just riddled with desire to enjoy it. Mm. rather than conduct himself in a controlled way and and uh yeah like that 
but it's also this thing about the male see the male here that's what it was that that's what drove him he couldn't possibly die having because he had two girls before he had the boy from mm. two different wives mm. but he couldn't and it's interesting growing up in the culture I did the Indian culture that was very much present when I was brought up in this country believe it was very very present the male the male must have a boy must have a boy you know mm. the, and if you have a daughter oh no I've got a daughter <laughs> so it's really interesting to come here and to see like Prabhupada says, it's the same old, same old, you know, birth, old age, disease and death, mm. whatever country, culture, setting you are, everyone seems to, it's the same mm. thing, that's how I feel, you know, mm. like I have so many chin, chin. aunts and uncles, I have like five, six daughters, and then one son at the end, if it were, it's like, it's, they didn't, they didn't kill their wife, they just continued trying to have the son, he just killed them off, because it was easier maybe for him, I don't know, but, because he was a king so he could do it or whatever yeah, <laughs> but it, it just seems the same thing you know and also not to get too controversial using Prabhupada's brought up abortion so mm. anyway not to you never know who's watching this but things like that may or may not have occurred as well mm -hmm. when one was aware that there was girls coming so mm. like that as well okay I can't see a text 22 <laughs> Under the scorching sun, the criminal has to pass through roads of hot sand with forest fires on both sides. He is whipped on the back by the constables because of his inability to walk, and he is afflicted by hunger and thirst. But unfortunately, there is no drinking water, no shelter, and no place for rest on the road. Text 23. While passing on that road to the abode of Yamaraj, he falls down in fatigue, and sometimes he becomes unconscious, but he is forced to rise again. In this way, he is very quickly brought to the presence of Yamaraj. So it seems that even while you're walking, it doesn't really matter. You fall over, you're fatigued. They force you to get up and keep walking. You know, just like you see in the movies, kind of. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, most of us haven't experienced anything like this, although mm. I'm sure. Some people mm -hmm. in in the world wars. Yep, yep. Or prisoners of war. Prisoners of war, For you sure. know, in the wars. For yeah. sure. Thus he has to pass ninety nine thousand yojanas within two or three month, moments. Then he is at once engaged in the tortu torturous punishment which he is destined to suffer. Purport. One yojin is calculated to be eight miles, and he has to pass along the road, which is therefore as much as 792,000 miles. Such a long distance is passed over within a few moments only. <clears throat> Such a, yeah, the subtle body is covered by the constables so that the living entity can pass such a long distance quickly and at the same time tolerate the suffering. This covering, although material, is of such fine elements that material scientists cannot discover what the coverings are made of. To pass 792,000 miles within a few moments seems wonderful to the material space travelers. <laughs> They have so far traveled at a speed of 18,000 miles per hour. But here, we see that a criminal passes 792,000 miles within a few seconds only. Although the process is not spiritual, but material. Hmm. So it's not even the spiritual process, it's still material. And in that way they travel. 792,000 miles an hour. That's <laughs> phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I, I guess what I understand from that is that although it's a long journey, and probably for the person suffering, it feels like they traveled every one of those miles mm -hmm. at like, you know, a half a mile an hour. Mm -hmm. um, but somehow they pass over it very quickly. Mm -hmm. And also because they're not in the gross body but a subtle body mm. that must attribute to how we move and no in experience things they're more in a subtle body because that's what it, it has explained that when you die and then they 
the Yamadutas bind you up mm -hmm. with the subtle. I mean, there was in the previous verse. Yes, yes. So it's not the gross body that's been that's yes, moving. Yes, that's important. But subtly, yeah. mind, you know, intelligence, whatever. Yeah, and move at the the move, pace of the mind right, yeah. can go from here to there to everywhere right. in a matter of seconds. Yeah. yeah. So we can move very quickly. The speed of mind. Mm. Yes, very nice. Important. Yeah. Um, text 25, he is placed <coughs> in the midst of burning pieces of wood and his limbs are set on fire. In Lord some cases he is made to eat his own flesh or have it eaten by others. Jai. From this verse, through the next three verses, the description of punishment will be narrated. The first description is that the criminal has to eat his own flesh, burning with fire or allow others like himself who are present there to eat. In the last great war, people in concentration camps sometimes ate their own stool. Mm. So there's no wonder that in the Yama, Yama Sadhana, the abode of Yamaraj, one who had a very enjoyable life eating others flesh, has to eat his own flesh. Mm. Very sad. Question. Yeah, when we were inside the kitchens here and uh, mm. they were cooking up some beef, the beef. lady said, oh yeah, we'll be cooking up some. And you could see how they were cooking and it's just like... I you could see how excited thing. they were as well. So no, no thanks, we're vegetarian. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Some people are able to detect what is happening because the camera is quite far away and you can see all the people walking in front of me. Yeah, I think mean, that's a free phone. Okay, it? so you read that one, right? Yeah. So 26. Prabhupada says in the last great war also. Mm. Interesting. Um, text 26. His entrails are pulled out by the hounds and vultures of hell even though he is still alive to see it. And he is subjected to torment by serpents, scorpions, and gnats, and other creatures that bite him. Next, his limbs are lopped off and torn asunder by elephants. He is hurled down from hilltops, and he is also held captive, either in water or in a cave. So it seems that... Um, for some reason, this reminded me of how Prahlad Maharaj was punished, <laughs> you know? Mm. So it's like, like that. Okay, text 28. Men and women whose lives were built upon indulgence and illicit sex life are put into many kinds of miserable conditions in the hells known as Tamishra, Anda Tamishra, and Rodava. So these are all described later in the fifth canto. Mm. Purport. Materialistic life is based on sex life. The existence of all materialistic people who are undergoing severe tribulation and the struggle for existence is based on sex. Therefore, in the Vedic civilization, sex life is allowed only in a restricted way. It is for the married couple and only for begetting children even when sex life is indulged in for sense gratification illegally or illicitly both the man and the woman await severe punishment in this world or after death in this world also they are punished by virulent diseases like syphilis and gonorrhea and in the next life as we see in the pages of the Bhagavatam, they are put into different kinds of hellish conditions to suffer. In Bhagavad Gita first chapter, illicit sex life is also very much condemned, and it is said that one who produces children by illicit sex is sent to hell. It is confirmed here in the Bhagavatam that as, much, as such offenders are put into hellish conditions of life in Tamishra, Anda Tamishra, and Rorava. Yeah, so these three hells are mentioned there. Uh, it seems like illicit sex life is a pretty serious offense. Um, so one has to be careful. Although, um... Mm. Yeah. Well, it says either illegally and illicitly, both the man and woman await severe punishment. Krishna. Yes. So, sex life has its function. 
So um, maybe we call it there? Yeah. I'm just thinking because I'm also cold. Okay. It's a little chilly. And, uh, Thanks for watching. I know you can't see us because there's a woman standing right there. <laughs> right in front of us now, <laughs> blocking the whole Right at the end. Um, but, uh, Let's hope yeah. she gets some subtle hints. Uh, <laughs> beaut beautiful, beautiful place. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we've, we've become hidden hidden from view for all of you, so we just mm -hmm. wish oh, you now you can see. We can maybe see. Uh, oh, hi. Hi there, I'm waving at you. <laughs> so we'll see you later. Um, yeah. Hi, hi Krishna. And, uh, I think we're uh, getting back in sort of. Please read Shri Mabhagavatam. Okay. Yes, Adi Bo. Adi Krishna. <laughs>